Okay, so we're still looking at variation of parameters in differential equations. Okay. Oops. Okay, so where were we? So we looked at a detailed explanation and now we're looking at the short version of how to do variation parameters. Unless explicitly asked to perform variation parameters from scratch, here's how we do it. Here's how we actually should do it. So first of all, solve the associated homogeneous differential equation for two independent solutions, y1 and y2. Write down the matrix equation y1, y2, y1 dash, y2 dash, times by the vector v1 dash, v, v, v2 dash, equals to vector 0 and an f over a2. Okay, remember that that's, this is saying that the, originally the equation, we're assuming originally the equation was, we're trying to solve is a2 y dash dash plus a1 y dash plus a naught y equals f. That's the equation we're trying to solve by variation, variation parameters. Um, okay. Um, So then you, so you do this, and you, you find an explicit expression for v1 dash and v2 dash. Okay, and this, this happens to be what it is. I, I never bother doing this. I just, I just go ahead and solve this using normal methods of solving it. Okay, so and maybe don't, don't worry about this if you don't want to. Uh, in fact, often you can actually solve this by inspection. Integrate v1 dash and v2 dash. Okay, of course. And then that write down the solution. Y is the, the this is the particular solution. V1 times Y1 plus V2 times Y2, and then here's the homogeneous bit. Alpha Y1 plus beta Y2. Okay. So let's now do an example. Okay, so solve y dash dash minus y equals e to the x with the initial conditions y naught equals one and y dash naught equals naught. Okay. So first of all, you've got to solve the homogeneous equation. So how do you solve that? Of course, you write down the auxiliary polynomial, which will be, it'll be um, lambda squared minus 1 equals 0. Um, so, oops. So that means that lambda squared equals 1, which means that lambda equals plus or minus 1. So the two solutions are e to the x and e to the minus x. Okay. So then we write down the matrix. E to the top row, e to the x, e to the minus x. Next row, the derivatives of that. That's not what that is. What? That, it's not like, that's not e to the minus x. That, that's a mistake. It must be. It's, it's, you know, it's just e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then you have e to the minus x minus e to the minus x, cool, times the vector v1 dash v2 dash equals 0, and here we have the thing on the right-hand side, which is e to the x divided by the coefficient in front of y dash dash, which in this case is just 1, so it just is e to the x, okay? So many ways of solving this system of equations, I mean... This is what the whole linear algebra section of this course has been about, or one of the things it's been about is solving these things. So you solve it however you want. Personally, I like to just inspect it. So what I mean is, I go, okay, um, in this case, what would I do? I would go, oh, okay, so we need V1, we need the, the top row needs to cancel out to give us zero, and the second row needs to give us e to the x. So if the second row is to give us e to the x, right? It's got, that means that the v2 dash, the v2 dash, the second row is to give us e to the x, okay? That means that the v2, v1 dash will have to have just a factor of, it's a constant factor because we've already got the e to the x there. And the second, the v2 dash will have to have something like e to the 2x because here we've got e to the minus x, so you want to get e to the x, so you need to, to multiply by e to the 2x, okay? But now, the, the top row, in terms of this by this, you want to get 0, right? So you want those things to cancel out. So their signs must be opposite, okay? So 
Now if we times the now if we do times the top row by this this vector one minus e to the two x, what do we get? We get e to the x minus e to the x to zero. That's cool. But what about the second row? Do we get what we want there? So if we do e to the we do e to the x times e to the e to the we do e to the x times one, you get e to the x. Then you minus e to the minus x times e to the minus e to the two x, you get e to the x. So you end up with two e to the e to the x, which is too much. We want just one, we just want, you know, one times that, we just want e to the x, so we need to divide the whole thing by 2. So times the whole thing by a half, okay? So that's what v1 dash and v2 dash should be. Is that what, do we agree with what they have? So v1 dash is a half, v2 dash is minus a half e to the 2x. Yes. Cool. Okay. Now we need to integrate these both things. So the integral, of course, of a half is just a half x plus c, and the integral of v2 is integral of minus half e to the 2x is going to be minus a quarter e to the 2x plus constant integration d. Okay, cool. So the solution is then this whole thing, okay? So v1, this is the v1, that's the v2, times by the e to the x, e to the minus x. Here's the homogeneous part, but actually these ho this homogeneous part Look, this constant, you get c times e to the x. That, that can be absorbed into that constant. Here you have d times e to the minus x. That can be absorbed to that constant. So, of course, this must happen because we are using this method to find a, homo find a particular solution, to find a solution to the inhomogeneous equation. And we know that there are many such solutions, but they all differ only by, scale, by linear combinations of the, of the homogeneous solutions. So, of course, the solution we get is only unique up to... Um, a linear combination of the homogeneous solutions, right? So there's sort of two things you can do. To simplify, two simplifications you can make to this method. When you integrate, you can either leave out the integrating factors, right? Because you know the, the, sorry, the integrating factors. You can leave out the constants of integration C and D here because you know that those constants are just going to introduce a home with the homogeneous part of the solution. And you don't really need that because you know how to add that on already. You just add it on like that. That's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is when you write down the final solution, you can just leave out this bit, right? Because you would get, if you kept that C and D, you're going to get C e to the x plus D e to the minus x, right? Because you know that if you did keep the constants of integration, the constants of integration here, you know what they're going to do is give you the homogeneous part. So you don't need to, you don't want to put the homogeneous, part, the homogeneous part in there twice. You don't want to have more constants than are necessary. You know, it's always going to be two constants. No, only, only two constants are necessary because it's a second order equation. Okay. So that's how you... Oh, now we have... This is the way you finish unless you do have are given two initial conditions. Initial conditions that will help determine what the constants are. That will enable you to determine what constants are. So the initial conditions were y of naught equals 1 and y dash naught equals naught. So that'll tell you what that'll that'll determine these constants alpha and beta. So you if y of naught equals one, then you just so you sub you let take this equation, let x equal naught in that equation, you're gonna get what? X equals naught, you're gonna get um naught plus alpha plus beta and y equals one, so you have one equals alpha plus beta, yes. And then you want y dash naught equals naught, so then now you need to actually differentiate that the, the, the thing you got for y. So y dash equals, so we're going to get what? Half e to the x plus half x e to the x plus alpha e to the x plus, oh no, minus beta e to the minus x. And then we're saying, y dash of naught equals naught, so 0 equals y dash of naught. So the y is a 0, the x is also the x is also 0, so then we get, get a half plus alpha minus beta, okay, equals 0. So this means that alpha minus beta equals minus a half. 
which is indeed what they have here. Solve these simultaneously any way you like to get so that alpha equals a quarter and beta equals three quarters. Okay. So then you know your final, well, that's your final solution. This thing with these constants. Okay. Now, should I do this one or should I make that do the next video? Yeah, let me just finish up. Okay. So now another example. Solve the differential equation d squared plus 1y equals 10x. Okay, so you want to first of all, you've got to solve the associated homogeneous equation, which of course has a um, auxiliary polynomial is lambda squared plus 1. Okay, so that means that lambda, so you have lambda minus 1. Oh, no, lambda squared plus 1, right? So that's the auxiliary polynomial within the equation. So the roots minus 1, so that means that lambda equals plus or minus i, right? So that means that the solutions are going to be e to the 0x, because the real part of that lambda is 0, Ooh, sorry, uh, times by cosine of, and then 1 times x. Okay, but that, of course, is just, that's just cosine x, because e to the naught is 1, and that's 1 is it. So the, and the other solution will be sine x. Okay, so that's indeed what they have. So we've got to solve this. We're going to make first row of this thing, Mix, put on this matrix equation, first row cos sine, that and the next row is the derivatives of that, minus sine and cos. You have the v1 dash, v2 dash, zero, and now you want the right-hand side of the equation, which was tan x. You want to divide by the, co the coefficient of the second derivative, but look, the second derivative has no coefficient in front of it. It's just one. Okay, so you solve this. Okay, so they do it by inverting. Again, I'm going to try and do it by inspection. So we want to get... The top row needs to give us 0, and the second row needs to give us 10. Okay, how do you get 10x out of a sine and a cos? Um, hmm. Well, 10 is going to be sine over cos, that's true. Let me write down some, quickly write down some, uh, some trig identities. So you don't have to do it like this way. You could just, okay, never mind. Let you, yeah, let's do the invert, inverting and multiplying one. Okay, fine. We need to, we want to invert this, um, we, we want to invert this matrix. So how do you invert a matrix? Remember you use the, it was, at least if it's a small matrix, it's sometimes convenient to use the, the, um, the it's, it's the adjoints times one over the determinant. Okay, so what's the determinant of this matrix? It's cos squared, cos squared x plus sine squared x. The determinant of that matrix is one. What is the adjoint? The adjoint is the transpose of the cofactor divided by the determinant. Oh, transpose of the cofactor. So the cofactor matrix. Okay, so the cofactor matrix, the cofactor of cos x is here just cos x, a cofactor of that the cos x is also cos x. The cofactor of the sine x is minus sine x, but then times by a negative thing because it's an odd entry. And the cofactor of the minus sine x is sine x, but times by negative because it's an odd entry. That's the cofactor matrix. The adjoint is the transpose of that. So it's, yes, this one, cos x, sine x, minus sine x, cos x. And then the, the inverse is this matrix, the, the, the transpose of the con, con transpose of the con, transpose of the cofactor matrix um, times like one over the determinant, but the determinant is one, so that stays like that, okay? So this is the inverse of that. So you multiply so you multiply both sides by the inverse, you get this. You do the multiplication out, you're gonna get minus sine x, tan x, and, sorry. <coughs> and V2 is, V2 dash is cos x, tan x. Okay, now apparently cos x times tan x equals sine x. Oh yes, of course, because tan x is sine over cos, so you can count down the cos and get sine. You could even, and you can think of this one as, this is sine squared x over cos x, but that doesn't help. Okay, integrating v2 dash is easy. Okay, of course, it's sine x, so the integral is minus cos x. v1 dash is an irritating thing to integrate. So how does the integration go? 
when I integrate this whole thing, it's the same as that. But sine squared x is, is the same as 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, that's, that's using the identity sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Okay, now we have cos squared x minus 1. Oh, ten, so this is comes cos squared x divided by cos x is cos x minus 1 over cos x, that's sec x. So the integral of cos x, that's just sine x. Then the integral of sec x is apparently this. Uh, that's a horrible one to calculate, isn't it? Um, at any rate, this is what the integral is. You can check it. How do you work it out? How do you work out this integral again? The integral of sec x? Um, I cannot remember, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so that means that the solution to our inhomogeneous differential equation is then going to be really how we have... Oh, we get this because many of the terms cancel. So the actual solution is we're going to have... What? Remember, solution will always be... Will always be v1, y1, plus v2, y2, uh, plus the homogeneous part. So this is just the particular part. So the v1 was... The v1 was... Sin, this is the v1, right? And we're timesing that by y1. y1 was cos x. So we get sine x cos x. <laughs> Okay, sine x cos x minus um, cos x lin sec x plus tan x. And then the next term is going to be v2 times y2. So v2 was... v2 was minus cos x, and y2 is sine x. Okay, so you get that. So those two terms cancel. And then we have plus the hom Oh, that's it. Okay, that's the particular part. Then you add on the homogeneous, homogeneous part. Okay, and that's it. Apart from the fact that I've forgotten how to integrate sec x. Never mind. <laughs>